Hello guys, welcome back to Campo Cafe. This time around we're reviewing Power Lines issue number one. It's basically written, drawn, everything done by Jimmy Robinson. Uh, this is released from Image Comics. I'll stay off the bat before I get into reviewing this book. If you do not like any a comic book with cussing, racially charged talk, uh, racial tension, uh, political stuff of today, this is not your book. This is a realistic gritty, streetwise, the, the way the description of the drama is, is really the best way to describe it. Now, this is only the first issue. There's a lot of setup in it, to be truthful. But that's what this book is. They get that out of the way very quickly in this book. So if those things bother you, this is not your comic book. If you're looking for a different kind of comic book and those don't bother you, this may be interested in you picking up. So we start off with this crew, this black crew. Because the book distinguishes between black and white, we gotta get this out of the way. The black crew who are going into basically a white neighborhood to put graffiti. Uh, the character you're following in this group is Dietrich, who's the newest member, young guy. And they they go to do the graffiti. And when they're leaving the car, the guy the leader says, "You know, don't trace the cops back to me. I just got my license back." And they say a lot of things before this that if you, you know, modern, this is supposed to be modern realistic. So language and stuff is, you know, modern. This is no, this book does not cut corners. This book is not afraid to say bad language or racial stuff. This book does not, not afraid to shy away from that at all. So they're doing graffiti. And of course, the guy you're following, Dietrich, he, they're the one the cops find. And they try to get him and he, he runs away. And he's like the whole time saying, don't shoot me, please don't shoot me, please don't shoot me. He's afraid of getting shot, obviously. Uh, and the setup beginning of this book is power lines. And what it means by lines is 44,000 years, the, reverse, the power lines reversed. And then we get 2,000 years, you know, something happens to the Indians. And it, and it keeps going through history, and it gets lost until today where it's found. So your character is trying to run away from the cops. And they kind of corner him. All of a sudden, he sees this light, and all of a sudden... He can fly. He feels like powerful. He can fly. And he could see really far. And he sees the leader of the group who supposedly was about graffiti. Use them as a distraction to break in this car. Steal this lady's purse. And uh, phone purse and run away. Her stuff. Her stuff and run away. He sees it. They don't. The rest of the group doesn't know he sees this. He flies away and he gets away. The cops don't know, know what to do about it. They're basically just going to, you know, go file a report. There's nothing else they can do about it. So the next day, we get to see our other characters of the book, which is Sarah Bellingham, 48 years old, widow, two kids. And her son, 24 years old, Kevin, who did two tours in the military and just got in the military. Now, being a realistic and this family being beat down to understand the beat down, we get to see Wayne Bellingham, the 10 year old son who got somebody got in a car accident and he's now paralyzed. So he's in a wheelchair. And then we see that the father who, who's dead died seven years ago of cancer. So that's the tragedy is all over this family. Right. Uh, and then we see the cops talking to her about stuff being stolen. She's really upset, you know, and, and she makes comments like, you know, uh, a lot of comments to the cops and stuff. Uh, that kind of makes the point. This is the dying triangle, and we'll fire report. We can't do anything, and she's kind of like confused and you know upset. And she's upset because the phone he took is not the phone, but the case was you know like the last thing given to her by her sister Darlene, who's dead. So again, a lot of death and bad things are happening clearly in this family. But she wants to get it back because the son. They have an app, of course, and they find out they know where the, the phone is, and he shows the cops, but they don't. Again, I ain't trying to. They don't want to go there. She's like, we're going to go there. Uh, and along the way to driving there, she says some, again, normal stuff, you know, giving handouts, government handouts to people and stuff. Again, this is a very politically realistic charged book. This book doesn't shy away from controversies and other stuff. That they're talking along the way. Uh, and he see he accesses the phone, you know, he can access the phone from where he is and sees the photos he took. And he sees the photos, whoever had the phone ended up taking photos of them. And they see them, and they go, you know, confront him. He goes confront him for the phone. Uh, and, of course, the, the, the leader of the group is really upset and, uh, you know, going to punch him. It's seriously going to hurt him. 
And, and the young black kid, Dietrich, he looks like he's going to do something, but then all of a sudden, the mother, you can see power lines in her eyes, she really fast saves him and drags him back, and she says there must have been an angel when she doesn't realize it was her. And all well, the other guys kind of run away. Dietrich's looking at her, and she's like, him, and she's like, you know, what are you looking at? And he, he sees, he sees it. He sees the power, you know, like, like he has. Uh, and she doesn't like him. She hates him, right? So we also saw before this, because I've, I've gotten to them so quickly, an Indian just looked like naked with a, a rabbit, you know, basically kind of telling you something's happened big. Uh, and then we see a guy's been following them all through this issue. Some some guys been follow them. And when, the, again, the girl, the young kid and the, the the widow, when she says she hates everything, he's like, oh, we have a problem. And, you know, he's calling the phone trying to get a hold of the guy. He can't get a hold of him. You know, basically, you know, say, hey, you need to meet me. It's happened. That's all we know. Uh, and then at the very end of the book, uh, we see an, the Indian guy again. And you see the power line triangle in his eyes now. And, and again, something big is going to happen. We don't know. Again, this is all set up with a book. So we have a setup where this young black kid and the widow who have whatever this power line stuff is don't like each other because of what's happened with the purse, right? Obviously, she's because he's, he may not have done it, but he's with that group. She thinks he's something to do with it. She doesn't like him, obviously, personal because of the phone and everything. Uh, Maybe because things are going bad, obviously bad in her life, son's in a wheelchair, husband's dead, maybe all this stuff adding up to you. Uh, and going, reading through, like, the introduction to this, Dietrich, it does say, you know, he is a, you know, he is a young, you know, ghetto who's turned around from these powers, but he can only use them in, in the white neighborhood and how they feel about him. So, again, it'll be interesting where this book goes. This is a very interesting book compared to most comic books because we have, you know, you're set on modern times and things are said that, may make you like the character and then make you also not like the characters. You may not agree with things this character say in the book, but a very interesting book overall compared to most comic books because it is realistic and it's not the simple, oh, I got my powers and I'm going to save the world. It's he got his powers to escape. She got her powers, but she did save her son, obviously, but she didn't know she saved her son. She thought it was like an angel. And so at least, it's one of those books that leaves you with a lot of questions more than answers. Like you start thinking, well, what if, what is this, this, and this? What does this mean? And then you start thinking, well, could it mean this is this? So we just have to wait as we go along. Again, a very, if you like a very interesting book, this is definitely it. Not your typical kind of, you know, superhero book. Uh, this is it. Again, we'll see where the story goes long term. The very first issue was interesting. If you like different kind of comic books, modern and that kind of stuff, then you should definitely go check out this book. Again, you can easily read the first issue, you know, understand where everybody's kind of coming from, where they're at. There is no, like, massive backstory to overload you or anything. They just tell you little things along the way, and you kind of piece it all together. Anyway, guys, what do you guys think of Power Lines number one from Image? Did you like it, not like it? Is this your kind of book? I'm very interested to see what happens in the second issue, because the cover kind of shows, uh, again, Dietrich kind of stopping a bus where there's, like, a girl uh, falling on the road. So is that really what happens, or is it kind of one of those covers where it's, it's just a really cool cover, but it has nothing to do with the story? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching like always, and I'll do another review soon. Laters.